we're going to be looking at the different types of knives and smallwares uh, that potentially could be used in a commercial kitchen. Some of these you also may have at home for personal use. Uh, so we're going to go through different ones and then your assignment will be at the end. So just a quick little recap when we are talking about knives, this is the um, basic construction of a knife. You've got the point up here, the tip, you have the blade, the cutting edge, also known as the sharp edge, the back or the spine, the bolster or shank. In this area, you've got the heel. You've got these three rivets right here that help keep the handle that encloses the tank. These are some of the different types of knives. The most common one is gonna be the chef's knife. Uh, you've also got a slicer, bony knife, paring knife, a chine, a fillet, and then a butcher knife, or also known as um, a meat cleaver sometimes, which is uh, what this is right in this area. You guys may have already chosen to watch this video. If not, it is a cool video to watch. A whole bunch of different types of knives and different types of knife cuts. So here's a couple of the different types of cuts that we would initially do in class, uh, but we don't have that right now. Uh, so this first one right here is called the chiffonade or the chiffonade. And what it does is you finally slice or shred leafy vegetables or herbs. Um, when they're fresh, when they're dried out, they tend to end up crumbling. So you would do it freshly. What you would do is you would stack um, the leaves together, then you kind of roll them, and then you just do a very smooth slicing motion, and that shreds it into these all um, bite-sized pieces that still have a lot of flavor in them. The rondelle, or also known as the coin, it's probably the most common one that we've done in class and some of your other labs. Uh, it's a small disc-shaped slice. Uh, like I said, depending on what you're cutting, is either the size of a penny or it's the size of a quarter. This one right here is called the roll. Its end result is a trapezoid type um, shape here. So what you do is you usually take a cylindrical fruit or vegetable. You would start cutting it as you would uh, cut a diagonal, which is a diagonal essentially is like a coin, except instead of going down at a 90 degree angle like this is right here, you actually end up turning it about 45 degrees and cutting it at an angle. So you would use this diagonal cut with a roll except for every slice that you do, you then roll the vegetable over 180 degrees, which is basically what was on top is now touching the cutting board and what was touching the cutting board is now on top and you go to cut again. So instead of changing the angle of your knife, you're just changing the angle of the fruit or vegetable by rolling it over. After you've done that enough times, you'll end up getting a handful of slices and then they'll end up being this trapezoid. So we'll have the two different angles on them. This is really great for like stews and things like that when you're looking for those bigger, heartier bites. The next one is called the julienne. It is literally a one eighth inch mat matchstick shaped cut. Um, it's about the height, they're usually about two inches or so long, and then it's an eighth of an inch all the way around. Unfortunately, this is really great for presentation, but it does seem to have a lot of waste, whereas like your roll and your diagonal has very little waste. Um, lots of product that you would end up throwing away just for presentation. Uh, the julienne is really great for presentation, but it does have a lot of waste. However, if you compost, you can save all those. The batonet is cut just like the julienne, except they're twice the size of it. They're twice the thickness. So this is actually a quarter of an inch. The last one is the brunoise, sometimes known as the julienne brunoise, because it is an eighth inch thick cubes. So basically you would do a julienne and then you would turn them to where they are horizontal, your knife is vertical, and then you would just evenly chop down an eighth of an inch apart and that would give you these nice even cubes. So the next couple of slides are just a bunch of selections of different hand tools. Some of them you guys are probably very familiar with and others not, uh, but we're just gonna kind of briefly go through them and then I'll give you guys some updates on ones if we have never used them in the classroom at all. A uh, vegetable peeler, we've used a ton. Cutting board, it's mandated that we use it. A colander, this is sometimes called a strainer. It's actually a colander. It's got that base that actually sets, which is really great. Um, instead of having like a mesh strainer where you have to hold it and try to strain your stuff out that way. A uh, cheese slicer, a butter curler, literally does exactly what it says it does. It just got the grooves right here. You would just take it top, uh, across the top of your butter and it does curl it. It is for decorative purposes only. Um, if you just wanted something to have butter on it, you could just slice the butter or spoon the butter out. 
an apple or fruit cores, this you would just plunge into the center where the core is at. This is sharp right here. You would just twist that and pull it straight out and you would remove the core with very minimal loss of product. Uh, kitchen shears, again, if these are designated kitchen shears, that's all what they should be used for. They should not be used to open canned goods. They should not be used to go make arts and crafts. If it's used, if it's meant to be used for food, it should stay being used for food. Next is a zester, which is kind of like a gigantic nail file. And then uh, you would take typically like a citrus fruit, uh, so a lemon, lime, oranges, and you would actually just scrape the rind on the outside of it and it creates this little zest right here and you can put that in certain recipes. The great thing behind it is it is a very, very light flavoring of whatever that citrus root is. It's not overpowering, but yet it has just enough of a hint in it that it really can change the profile of your dish and really add a lot of flavor to it. Uh, this is a strainer, also known as a mesh strainer, uh, whisk, chef's fork, tongs. Uh, this right here is a locking device on the tongs, so you would close those and pull that up, and then that should lock them into place. Wooden spoons, and then spatulas. People also call these rubber scrapers as well. Um, either one is fine. A box grater, the different sizes right here will give you the different types of uh, size, like of shreds, like if you were doing shredded cheese. Over here on the side would be finely shredded. Over here would be kind of a thicker shred. Pizza cutter, egg slicer, uh, pastry blender is used whenever you're making like pastry doughs, like uh, pie crust. Uh, and what this does is this breaks up the fat that you eventually have to mix in with the dough because you don't want to put a solid chunk of fat in there. Uh, so like cold butter or lard or anything like that. Um, and you don't want to put it in melted either because it will make the consistency too sticky and it will make it too uh, liquidy and doughs have to just be kind of barely moist to where all the flour sticks together. Uh, however, you still want to have your butter mixed in there. So you would get cold butter and you kind of initially chop it up and then you would use this pastry blender and that will finish breaking it up to about a pea size um, chunk of fat and then it will create the nice little flaky bubbles in your guys's pie crust. Bench scraper is used for dough. Uh, you've got your rolling pins and then you've got this is uh, called a china cap. It's also called I believe it's pronounced a chinois or a chinois. I have to double check that to be honest with you guys. But I, I've always known it as a china cap. Some of the selection right here uh, is you're measuring. You've got your portion scale, a balance scale, and electronic scale. You want to make sure on the electronic scale, on the portion scale, that number one, you either have some type of bowl or like a piece of wax paper or something down, especially for measuring multiple things. You don't want cross contamination to happen. If you decide to use a bowl, you want to make sure that you that you zero it out. You hit the tear on it so it is not measuring the weight of the bowl and your ingredients, but it's just measuring the weight of your ingredients. And then the other really common ones, you've got your measuring spoons, your liquid measuring cups, and then your volume measures, also known as your dry measuring cups. Measuring spoons are used to measure small amounts of both liquid and dry. Li liquid measures is just for liquid only. So like your water, milk, oil, things like that, syrup. Your volume measures or your dry measuring cups are going to be for your like flour, sugar, brown sugar, things like that. Okay, your assignment is going to require you to use some of your notes and some of the internet as well. So I've either given you the picture of the tool or I've given you the name and then you need to fill in the rest of the missing information. So this one right here, this is one that you can find in your notes. If you know what this is without watching this video, then you would just write it directly in there. Um, others, you're going to have to use Google Images to look for. And there's a total of four slides, five slides with it, I'm sorry. And when you're done, just hit turn in. If you have any questions, email me or join the web meeting later this week.